Um, ecosystem design and collaborative design are two of the biggest trends that are changing the way that people are designing goods, services and systems. What better a way to explore what these terms actually mean than with the executive director of one of the world's leading design agencies, IDEO, who's right here in the studio with us today. Chris Grantham from IDEO is here right now. Chris, is it fair to say we are entering a new era of design or is that a little bit hyperbolic? No, I think, Colin, I know you're prone to being a bit hyperbolic, but I actually think that's a very reasonable uh, thing to say. Um, I think that design is really rapidly changing, obviously, with many new tools and technologies that we have with the, all these fourth industrial re revolution trends, such as uh, data science becoming a design discipline that we work with, for example. Um, but I do think that the questions that design is trying to answer, you know, in, in other words, the, the way in which we're trying to shape the world to our needs is becoming um, you know, ever more urgent that we, that, we, that we address design to some of the more systemic challenges that we face. And I think because of that, um, you know, we are seeing um, because of that, and I think these new technologies, we're seeing design change, you know, quite a lot. So I think we're moving from an era where, you know, we were designing uh, products and services for the economy, particularly products that were sitting on top of well-established kind of models uh, that didn't change that often in terms of sort of fundamental business models and the, and the, the linear model. Um, and I think now we're sort of seeing that. Uh, really, that you know, circularity is becoming a key design skill. Um, I think that uh, ecosystem design is becoming an essential innovation skill um, uh, because we're seeing that we are ne really needing to go back to some sort of first principles around actually not just redesigning the product itself, but actually the whole s the systems and the models that support the, the the circular use of materials in the economy, for example. So the design has gone from this kind of fire and forget thing that they design and sort of put out into the world to really having to be much more aware and capable of designing within a systemic context, uh, and also, of course, uh, interested in things like whether they, we can get those materials back and how we can repurpose those materials and that, all those good principles of circularity. So there's a lot more, I think, um, for the designer to consider. They have many more tools to work with now. This is all adding complexity to the designer's life, of course, but I think that there are, there is a, you know, there's, design is trying to, I think, address more fundamental questions in society, and I think that's a, uh, obviously a, a, has, is having a profound effect. But what's the, what's the way in which IDEO typically tends to work? Uh, I mean, we're, so we're a design thinking uh, organisation, we're a design thinking company, that's how we practice design thinking is what I'm trying to say. And so that's particularly useful for tackling um, systemic uh, challenges and, and thinking in a systemic way. So we, in my area of the circular economy, we're trying to develop circular products, services and systems and we use design thinking as our sort of basic methodology. So working with many different design disciplines so that we can think more uh, across systems, think more in systemic terms because you're not just thinking about the product, you might be thinking about the product, you might be thinking about the data it needs to work within a circular system, uh, you might be thinking about the, the business model, uh, you might be thinking about uh, a new service model and all of those things having to come together. So it's, it's, it's a useful tool to have that multidisciplinary perspective. We, we always try and um, build to think, we build, we build prototypes and test them. So we're looking, and this is as true of circular ideas as it is, as it is of any idea. So we're trying to understand, does it solve a problem for the customer? Uh, is it valuable in business terms? Is it valuable in terms of circularity in, in, in terms of our discussion here? And also, is it, is it technically feasible? So these are some of the things that design thinking looks at, the different lenses that it has. And I, I know you're very proud of a couple of platforms that you work on. I don't know if platform is the right word, but <laughs> OpenIDO and Colabs. Can you just give us a quick lowdown of what they're all about? Because they're crucial to this question of collaborative and ecosystem design, aren't they? Absolutely, yes. Yeah. So, um, oh, so OpenIDO is, is really um, a... Uh, Think of it as a crowdsourced innovation network. So, you know, we take the design thinking process and we put it out as a process that people can follow from a digital platform, people out there in, in the world. I mean, it has a, a sort of standing network of about 100,000 people. And then we also recruit uh, specific, could be startups, could be additional uh, design uh, experts. It could, be, it could be reaching out to a group of students in a particular area. So it, we, we tend to curate the community for challenges, but we also have this standing community. And it allows us to, 
I think you know, what's interesting for businesses is where they may have tried to tackle a problem within their own four walls, and it's a particularly challenging problem, and the conventional thinking just isn't cutting it, isn't getting the, the different way of looking at the problem and the different answers, uh, then often, and circularity would be a, a classic case for that, then often it's, it's useful to put that question and look for ideas at a much broader level with people that aren't necessarily steeped in business as usual. So, so that's why it's a powerful medium. And Colab is, is similar in the sense that it, it's equally, it's a sort of a, a, an open platform where organisations who share a purpose have agreed to come together, uh, share insight and, 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 and leverage each other's perspectives uh, to try and get more perspective, more diversity of thinking. So it's a, it's a similar principle to Open Idea, but it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a smaller group, a, a handful of corporates uh, working, working together um, and, and uh, uh, hopefully influential corporates who, who in their own right can, can, can change systems um, just as, just as uh, we think it's important to include more of a more of a community element, if you like it, in in, in open, open idea. Uh, Colab is more from a sort of corporate perspective. And you've got companies like well, Ellen MacArthur Foundations in there, but Ford, McDonald's, Starbucks, Steelcase, some big names from around the world. Absolutely, yeah. And so in the circular economy space, we, those are some of the organisations we've be, we've been working with, um, and uh, we have we've had we have a, a food. Uh, instance of the circular economy collab in, in San Francisco and in, in London we have one that's been pretty much focused on the textiles and apparel industry um, this this year and so the same the same idea as I, as I said is, is kind of it's, it's about bringing together a, a group of companies that we think represent an interesting set of capabilities when brought together so they can they themselves can represent uh, if you like the the, uh, the 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 key parts of a, of a value chain, um, and so we think in, in in bringing them together, we can start to look at more, at a more collective level at some of those opportunities for change, and that's obviously important when uh, we don't you know when when one organisation is, is it will struggle to scale their circular economy innovation without that shift in the wider value chain, and that's what we're that's what we explore with with these member organisations. But Chris, I want to speak to you right now about uh, about the collab stuff. Well, tell us, you've you've mentioned food, you've mentioned fashion. What's there? I know there's four broad themes of the collab. Can you tell us a little bit about those broad themes. Sure, I can. I've got an image here which I think uh, talks to that. So there we go. So. Uh, so yes, in the collab, these are our research themes, and um, they kind of represent different parts, as, you're, as you can see, different parts of the the, um, the value chain or value system, as, as, as we like to call it in the circular economy, because it's a little less sounds a little less linear. Mm -hmm. um, so these, I guess, are, are, are themes. So new models of ownership would be talking to. Um, we we'll are talking to the shift from product to service, so in the case of uh, fashion that might be looking at subscription models. Marketplaces and platforms I think are pretty self-explanatory, but how do we connect uh, you know, uh, maybe um, essentially kind of waste or surplus materials to, to new customers. Uh, circular distribution systems is looking at that piece of obviously getting the stuff to, to customers and back. Uh, rethinking products and manufacturing is how do we design you know, entirely new products and product systems from scratch that are to fit in these circular, circular business models. Uh, and then reimagining materials is pretty closely linked to the redesigning of products, but that's actually looking at the, just the, the material piece. So, so we try to pick off kind of all the parts of you know, manufacturing a, a, a product, a, a consumer, if you like, or a, a, you know, a consumer space product, getting that product to them and, and getting, them, getting the product materials back and looking at all parts of that, that system. I mean, I'm, I don't come from the world of design, so I, I guess uh, I guess my first thought when I look at this is it kind of surprises me that a design agency is involved in so many different aspects, looking at the materials, the distribution systems, the manufacturing, where I guess, to me, I might have thought a few years ago that a design agency is all about the look and perhaps the function of a product. Yeah. But this is so much wider than that. Well, I think that's, I mean, if, if ultimately, you know, we're trying to design... Yeah, a circular product. Then, and for, you know, for better or worse, we have to be involved in, in designing the, the pretty much the system that's going to uh, that's going to make that product circular. Um, so, um, and, and you know, it's interesting. We're, I know we're going to come on to this later, but you know, in doing that, we've discovered that actually, yeah, we, we've almost have to be in the business of creating new infrastructure where there isn't actually that that circular value chain in the first place. Um, so, it, it's it's interesting. That it's almost you know going back to designing the the industrial system again, as as happened two hundred years ago. I mean, it's 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 that fundamental, some of the pieces that are missing uh, that will enable companies to scale their, their, their circular products. Um, so that's very interesting. But the, 
the um, yeah the job of the designer really going back to your point earlier around how is design changing you know clearly you know, for to, to achieve impact the impact that we want to have in the world um, in terms of in terms of bringing a circular economy forward then yes we have to be designing many more things than just the product in isolation but also accounting for that for that wider system and we're going to talk uh, now about a real example of how this collab, where 26, 26 I think different companies are working with IDEO to help redesign the fashion industry. Chris, fashion industry is a big one to tackle. Um, how on earth, where on earth does someone start when they're looking at how to redesign that system? Yeah, so I mean, so we we create specific design challenges within these uh, five research themes. So I just wanted to kind of oh, let's squeeze uh, squeeze on the screen there, but uh, I just wanted to um, yeah touch on some of the areas. So uh, we've done a few different uh, prototypes now that look at um, you know fashion as a su subscription. Uh, so uh, mm. we, we had an idea called Revolve, which looked at creating a a capsule collection for workwear that sort of had a a, a core part of the the collection. Your sort of everyday stuff that you would you would still own, but some of the more kind of fashion and seasonal seasonal items uh, you would subscribe to, as for example. So that was a way to the core collection. You 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 maintained a, a repair relationship with the with the brand. The brand helped you maintain that core collection, and then the stuff that you were literally wearing much less that were more fashion driven were in a subscription model where that stuff was kind of taken back and designed for for kind of recapture and recycling. Is this a real working model just now? This was a prototype that, that were created. Some of these. Uh, some of these actual prototypes on screen now are being taken forward by various members of the of the collab, uh, the circular economy collab. Because um, fashion, renting fashion items is nothing new, but yeah. everyday clothing, I guess, is the difference, right? Yeah, everyday, and I think also it's you know what we spend a lot of time is, is on in the collab in the design sprints is actually how you'd start to implement some of these ideas. So, yes, it's it's not uh, yes yeah, so there are many established models for for rental in in, in the fashion wear, but as you say, it's a little bit more kind of high fashion. So this was more everyday, um, and we're really 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 interrogating how would we actually implement these ideas um, and starting to bring so the teams some teams as you know we mentioned earlier the research teams. some teams are working on the materials piece some te teams are working on a reusable packaging piece and so what's exciting is when they start to almost cross fertilize between the teams if you like and and and, uh, and start to kind of build show how these 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 areas could come together to build more of a whole sort of circular uh, system for fashion and that's really exciting yeah so we have ideas here around a reusable packaging system and, and logistics system which I, I'll come back to kit, kit collective was looking at uh, distributed or yeah distributed manufacturing so how do we kind of leverage the the gig, gig economy and skill up the gig economy for for new manufacturing jobs at a, at a much smaller scale had a, had a blockchain element there savvy was a resale platform so how do we how do we allow brands to get a bit more of the sort of if you like the eBay action so how, how do how if, how if you build certain services into a, uh, a kind of a digital wardrobe can you help uh, the customer find more value for the things that are locked away in their wardrobes to find buyers for their see their own wardrobe as a marketplace really um, and so that's that's uh, another prototype so there is a there is a range of prototypes that kind of look at um, new products and services that, that the brands can be offering um, and then and then we've started to discover something a little bit more kind of underlying this uh, but uh, but that's that's kind of a, gives you a sense of some of the ideas so there's a set of ideas that you're developing in partnership with uh, others or Relevant agencies within the collab, exactly, yeah. and some will get taken on and, and really investigate further, and, and others. Yes, yeah, so some of them that require materials innovations. You know, we'll, we'll, yeah. we'll work more with certain companies on those areas and etc. So we obviously um, align the the briefs and the prototype areas um, with the particular companies we're, 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 who are in the collab. What we started to see was that really underpinning uh, some of the ideas was uh, this need for for digital infrastructure, uh, or, or the need, sorry need for 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 new infrastructure. Um, and uh, so we had uh, we had this idea of uh, the the reusable packaging system i mentioned the kind of the workwear as a service uh, and then savvy the resale platform uh, so they're both underpinned uh, by some missing infrastructure if you like or what we're calling the the circular operating system um, so uh, here we here you can see that what we have is, is is a number of areas where you know if we didn't have this infrastructure in place, it'd be very hard for brands to actually deliver and scale a circular fashion subscription because the logistics piece is missing. There isn't really a, a, a you know a circular logistics system at the moment. The packaging piece is missing because there isn't really the circular 
circular packaging system. Um, in the case of the um, the uh, the re-commerce platform or the um, the fashion as a subscription, there isn't really a digital wardrobe infrastructure. And actually, when you start to look at those areas of we're calling it the circular operating system, uh, that's a really fascinating area for for collaboration to happen. Um, because it's really not in the interests of any one company to try and develop all that on their own. Um, and they often haven't got those capabilities. And yet, what matters most and what's, is, is for the end customer, you need to create these new platforms and they need to have as many of the brands on them as possible because we don't want to be having 10 different digital wardrobe apps on our phones. So it's really fascinating that maybe a core group can start to develop these, but then there's quickly network effects whereby, you know, the... the, 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 the um, because at the end of the day, we're interested in scaling this stuff. So, uh, you know, the more inter interoperable we can make it, you know, the more you know, suitable for, for, for the different brands to come easily on board, maybe even open source these platforms, uh, is, is, is a very exciting opportunity. If we're going to make this kind of transformation, it's not just at the level of material flows. I really deeply believe it's in the terms of the mindset of the economy we bring. I think the 20th century was dominated by a mindset which was driven by proprietary ownership, not just of materials, but ideas, intellectual property, and we need to move to free and open source design so that we have shared standards, knowledge, governance in the commons, so that indeed we can have a network that connects. When I talk to 21st century urban designers, product designers, enlightened corporate leaders, social startups, they're asking a completely different question. How many benefits can we layer into the way that we design this? What could this enterprise do for the community, for culture, for the living world? What can it give back? Because we recognize we're part of a system of mutuality. And that's an utterly different place where the business design comes from. I think we're moving from extractive to generative in the way we design what business can be and do in the world. It's painful, especially if you're in one business that's trying to make that change. But this is the drama of our times. And of course, it is also the adventure of our times. Wow.